So welcome to the lecture on Git, GitHub, and version control. Before we talk about GitHub, let's talk about Git, which is a version control system. So a Git repository is a directory that the software Git is using to keep track of versions. So uh, the reason we use version control is because one of your biggest enemies is yourself from six months ago or yourself from two years ago. Um, that person is really inconsiderate. They don't document their code. Um, they don't leave you breadcrumbs to get back to important uh, points in the code and so on. And, and version control systems are a way to automate this to make sure that yourself from six months ago becomes your best friend. So the way that you have to initiate Git is you have to install Git locally. And we'll talk a little bit about connecting Git to uh, GitHub, which is a cloud service, um, or any other cloud service in a little bit. But let's just initially talk about Git and what it's accomplishing. So you have to install Git locally. Um, and if you, you know, if you have a Linux computer or if you're working on a cloud computer or something like that, it probably already has Git installed. Then from the command line, you can initialize a uh, git directory with the command git init. Um, you can, you can uh, have, we'll have a different workflow later, um, but for right now, if you want, you can initialize a repository with git init. Then that's just it. Your, um, your files in that repository are then part of your git repository, though I'm going to uh, make sure that we understand how we add things and how we keep track of uh, how we make sure certain things are being kept track of and other things are being ignored. So at any rate, once you've done this, your git repo, which is just this directory, is a, local, uh, a locally version controlled system. So git is not like, say, Dropbox or Google Cloud Drive or any of these other systems that just automatically keep track of everything within the directory. Git requires you to add things with intention. So you can add files in order to be tracked with the command git add and then file name. Now the file name is not, a, is not actually added to the repository yet. Of course, it's in your directory. Um, however, uh, it's not added to the repository yet. We still need to commit that in order to make sure the repository is keeping track of it. But now that we've added it, it is staged to be added to the Git repository. So if you do not add a file to your Git repo, then it won't be tracked. And um, this step of adding a file in order for it to be tracked, once you commit it, that step only has to be done once. So you might very easily lose track of which files are being kept track of, which ones are being staged in order to be, for the changes to be checked into the repository, and which ones are being ignored. And so the easiest way to do that is with the command get status, and it'll give you a list which ones have been changed, which ones have been changed and those changes are staged to be committed and which ones are being uh, ignored, which files are being, I'm sorry, which files are being tracked and which files are being ignored. So the way Git operates then is you, it does not just sort of run in the background and automatically commit changes to your repository. Instead, what it does is it requires you with intention to commit the changes when you're at a meaningful checkpoint. And this has many benefits. Uh, it, the biggest one being that when you do a commit to a Git repo, it is a meaningful checkpoint. Whereas with passive version control systems, the point at which the files are backed up or, or kept track of uh, may not be meaningful. You may have to go through too many, too many time points and so on. Now, instead, we're checking in files when we've done something useful and we're adding a message so that um, we can go back and refer to specifically what we did in order to commit those files, why we committed those files. And so the command is git commit, dash a means commit all files. If you don't want to use dash a and you just want to commit a specific file, you just put the file name there. And then dash m with a quoted message uh, commits it for a specific message. Now Git d demands that you have a commit message. You cannot check in your files without a commit message. I like to do this at the command line with the dash M 
Uh, however, if you don't put dash M there, it's going to bring up an editor and ask you to put in a commit message for you. So just once again, dash A means commit all files and that are staged for commits. Uh, and then, of course, you can commit individual files or a collection of specific files. And that dash M commit message is the message associated with your commit. Uh, so you want to make your commit messages uh, informative um, so that when you go back to this commit later on, you can refer to it, something where you can refer to something meaningful. Now, the real magic of Git happens is when we connect our local repository to a remote repository. And this allows us to collaborate with many people and even collaborate with, oursel with ourselves on different computers. So a uh, remote repository is usually kept track of by a Git server. Now, um, there are many cloud services that provide Git servers for you in addition to many other services like uh, front ends to your Git repos living on the server. And so the most famous of these is called GitHub, though it's by no means the only one. GitLab is another one that, that some people roll out themselves. Bitbucket is another one. Um, and they all work roughly in the same way. Um, so at any rate, a Git remote, a Git, GitHub, uh, a Git server like GitHub is a server for hosting your remote repository. Um, so in addition, I would add that that I like GitHub because it adds all this additional functionality that we'll we'll talk about. Um, in addition, I would say, in, in, in addition to using the command lines like I'm suggesting, you can uh, use a GUI that, for example, the company GitHub creates in order to connect your local and remote repositories together. And I would suggest you give those a try. They're, um, they're quite nice and uh, they're very intuitive, but we won't cover them because they're so intuitive. So we need a way to connect our local repository to our remote repository. So I, there's two ways to do this. One is to create the local repository, then create the repository on GitHub and connect the two. I don't find that to be the easiest way to do it. I find that the easiest way to do things is just to create the repository on GitHub and then clone it locally. Okay, so just start with the remote repository on GitHub and then clone it locally. So what I do to do this is I just on GitHub, I go to create repository, it creates a repository. I usually create a readme file so it has one file in it. And then I clone that repository locally. What it means to clone a repository is to make a copy of that repository uh, connected to that repository. Uh, on your local computer. So you have a Git repository on your local computer then, and then you have a Git repository on your remote computer as well. Um, like I said in step one, I find that's the way I like to do things, create it on the Git server, the GitHub um, uh, remote uh, uh, um, service, and then clone it, versus the other way to do it would be to already have the uh, repository on GitHub and already have your repository initialized locally and then inside your local repository you can do a command called remote add origin and then uh, you can give it the GitHub uh, um, name of the repository on GitHub and connect it in that way. I find that to be a little bit uh, uh, frustrating to do so I almost always just do one. You can clone a repository, which is again to create a, a, a local copy. You can clone it in several different ways. You can use the Git command line interface. You can use a, a connection protocol called Secure Shell, or you can use um, uh, the web protocol HTTPS. Uh, and if you don't know what these are, just start out just using HTTPS. However, there is an issue in that um, uh, that uh, if you want to push changes back to your remote repository, you really want to do one of the other um, one of the other ways of connecting, or to use one of these desktop client softwares software. So you can push changes from the repo that you're working on to the to the remote repo. So you would want to do this. Let's say, for example, 
I'm working on these notes, which are, are, are hosted in a Git repository on GitHub. And I've made the changes. I've already seen some typos just going through this lecture. And I've made the changes locally. And I've recompiled the web pages. And now I want to push the changes back up to GitHub. So those are represented locally. And when I want to push changes up to the server, I'm going to do a push command. So in this case, I would run the command git push origin main. Or in my GitHub software, I would simply um, uh, push the button that says push to remote. And then that will take the changes that exist on my local repository and represent them on the remote repository. So again, we're just mostly just covering jargon at this point. But pushing changes means pushing changes from your local repository to your ro remote repository. I should say um, older repositories in GitHub, if you've used it for a long time, the default branch is called uh, master instead of main, but they switched that uh, around 2020 or so. So now it's main. So what, it, what the command means, git push origin main, it means git push my changes from my local repository named origin to the remote branch main. Now, um, imagine um, I made some changes to my book on another computer I own push those changes up to uh, my ro remote repository. And now I come to my office and I'm using a desktop computer in my office. And I want the changes that are on GitHub now represented on my local computer because I want to work on the book again. OK. Now what that means is I want to pull my changes from the remote repository to my local, repo to my local repository. So it's going to go. Uh, from remote GitHub to local. So you can see in this little uh, directed acyclic graph over here that we have the GitHub node, and that is pointing to my local node. Pulling means to pull changes from the remote to my local repository. Of note, if I have changes on my remote repository and I start working on my local repository without having pulled it first, then I'm going to have a distinction. I'm going to have changes on my remote that aren't represented on my local uh, version. So when I go to push my changes in my local version up to GitHub, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute. There's changes in the remote that you didn't pull first, so we need to resolve that. And it's going to take you through a series of steps to resolve that. So just to reiterate this idea of cloning, the idea of creating a clone of a repository is to uh, just simply create a local copy of it from a remote repository. Um, now, um, take, for example, these notes. They exist in a GitHub repository on GitHub, of course, a Git repository on GitHub. And so I can clone it. And I clone it uh, in a way that my credentials are all set up so that I can push back and forth to GitHub. So I'm like the node GitHub, from GitHub 1 to local one, that's me. I can push back and forth to GitHub. However, you might also want a copy of the book and all the notes locally so that maybe you can look at it on an airplane. So you would pull to local to, to your own repository, and it works in exactly the same way. The only difference is you wouldn't have the cred credentials to write to my remote. So um, if you were to just cl clone it, then you would um, then uh, you wouldn't be able to push any, let's say you made changes to my book because you thought there was a, um, some things that could be done better. Well, you don't have any authority to push those changes anywhere because all you have is a local version of my repository and you don't have the rights to push to my remote repository. Now, suppose you find that situation untenable and you would like these represented in a good version of the book that has these changes um, uh, fully represented and so that other people can actually access it. Well, you'll never get access to write to my repository because it's my repository. I, don't, I, I only want certain specific people writing to my repository. Um, but what you can do is take my remote repository and create a fork of it. What this uh, fork is is just a simple uh, copy of the remote repository um, on GitHub, let's say. And that fork, then you can clone that fork locally. Now, the distinction between this step and this step, when you clone it, 
is that now your local version doesn't point backwards to anything. When you fork it, your local version points back to your remote copy, your remote typically public copy of the book in this case. So you can make changes on your version, push it to a public version, GitHub 2, on the remote repository um, uh, that represents all those changes. And you can make your remote repository public or private, um, but it's the, the origins of this was working on um, open source software where um, someone who thought they could improve on the software but doesn't, the, but doesn't have the rights to push back to the original version of the software would start pushing back to their fork of the software and in some cases the forks got better than the original software. Now, suppose you did make these changes to the book and you're like, look Brian, these are just mistakes. You got to change your book. Well, you don't have the rights to have your changes automatically represented in my book. However, what you can do is ask me to incorporate those changes. And the way you ask me is with something called a pull request. And you would just go on the GitHub site, and because you forked your repository from my parent repository, you can issue a pull request to my parent repository and say, I've made some changes, I think these are good changes, you should represent them in your repository. And so that, would, that is an example of a, of a so-called pull request. So in this course, we're not going to deal a lot with branching, but I do want to at least mention it. Um, it's often the case when working with software or projects, you have some development version that's not the sort of official version, and then you have a release version, which is the official version that people use, or maybe a stable version. And so GitHub allows you to have different versions of your repository, both locally and on the remote. And so locally, if I want to create a new copy of my repository in the same directory that I can just destroy everything and really use as a sandbox, I can do git checkout dash b dev, and that'll create my dev development repository where dev is the name of the repository I want to create. So I would call it dev because it's a development repository, but you could call it sandbox or something like that. And in that branch, you can destroy whatever you want with no concern that it would impact your main branch. But imagine your development branch becomes really good and you want to incorporate that the changes from your development development branch into your main branch. Well, what do you do? If you say get checkout main, then you switch back into the main branch. And you'll notice if you do this on your local computer, the files change. They change to the files in the branch, um, in, in the correct branch. So you get checkout main. Now that directory is representing the main branch. And then you say get merge dev, that'll bring my changes from my development branch into my main branch. So branches are a really nice way to work with um, uh, multiple repositories at the same time that represent the same project, but at different phases, a development phase, a release phase, a stable phase, maybe a historic stable phase or something like that. Um, so this is a whirlwind tour of Git and GitHub, and you'll be using it a lot in this class. And in addition to these slides, we'll have some code demos as well. So thanks again for listening, and I'll see you for the next lecture.